So if you have a fear of failure, then this video is a video full of philosophies that will help you overcome your fear of failure. It will help you reframe and deal with the fear so that it doesn't overpower you and instead you can use it to your advantage to help you get what you want out of life rather than cowering away from it. So there's a couple of ways you can use this video. So before doing something, you can watch this video so that you have the philosophies in your mind just as you're about to do the thing that you fear. The alternative is you can watch this video every single day for 30 days until the philosophies in this video seep into your subconscious and it becomes your thoughts on the matter. Either way, it will help you become fearless in absolutely every area of your life. So without further ado, let's get into it. So if you didn't know already, I'm Jay Mystery. I'm the author of this book, How to Become Fearless. And during the process of writing this book, I had many different ideas and different philosophies as well. But I'm gonna give you five that can really apply immediately right now. But bear in mind, there are more. Uh, these are just really powerful ones. And so the way I wrote that book, I sectioned it off into three different sections. So you have heightening your awareness of fear, reframing fear, and death. So each of these different areas of fear discuss fear differently and how you can deal with it at that stage. So if you enjoy this video, then I'd recommend getting that book because it has the entire breakdown of fear and all the research that I've found put into one place, which is that book. So I'll leave a link below where you can get that. But now let's get into this video, the five philosophies that will help you overcome your fear of failure. So philosophy number one is knowing what conditioning fear is. So fear is a conditioning process. Eventually, over time, you accumulate these different experiences based on that fear, and these experiences build you up. So you eventually become fearless to the thing that once held you back. So for this philosophy to work, it requires you to go out of your comfort zone time and time and time again until the thing that you once feared gets done so many times that you become numb to it and then you realize all is good. So an example I put in the book is like public speaking. Lots of people, they regard that as one of the top fears in life. Now I used to have that fear as well, but having done so much public speaking over my career, I've become numb to it. Now there's no issue. I can just go up and speak to a room of people or an individual person or a big crowd. So it usually starts like this. You are reluctant to even start in the beginning. Then you have to get pushed up onto stage or you try and convince other people to do it, but you have to get pushed onto stage by someone else. Then when you're eventually on stage, you might be stuttering, you might be jittery. You have you definitely have notes that you're trying to read off, like maybe even full pages of notes. Next, once you become more comfortable with it, you just stick to the bullet points of those topics that you're talking about. Next, you kind of memorize everything so you don't need to have any notes. You just go off instinct and go off the uh, the trust that you know what you're talking about and then towards the end you don't ever want to come off stage people have to tell you to come off stage or to grab the mic off you or lower the fader because you just are so comfortable in your zone right now on stage talking to a bunch of people about a specific topic so with conditioned fear the main thing to remember is that you are building reference experiences that you can look back on and say i've already done this so this shouldn't be as hard as if it if i hadn't done anything to do with it so for example let's just go back to public speaking if you've done public speaking two, three, four, five, six, ten times, twelve times, twenty times, thirty times, now you have all these different reference experiences to refer back to to say, you know what, I've done this in the past. Now, if I want to do this speech in front of ten thousand people, oh, I've done a speech in, as a collective of ten thousand people before, or even maybe not, but you have trained your muscles so well over time that this speaking thing is not a big deal anymore. So just remember that you're building reference experiences by conditioning the fear into you. So philosophy number two is the what if paradigm. So our minds are designed to find problems and situations or threats and figure out ways to eliminate them. We literally cannot stop it. It is just designed to find problems and eliminate them. So starting a sentence or starting a thought or a statement off with what if is the precursor of a question that is based in fear. It's coming from a place of fear. So it could be structured like, what would happen if I did X, Y, and Z? Or what if X, Y, and Z happened? So for example, let's just go back to public speaking. What if I start this speech on stage and someone comes up behind me and pulls my pants down in front of 10,000 people? So with that, it's a completely irrational fear, right? Because the chances of that happening are really, really, really no. It's not impossible, but it is really, really low. But as I mentioned in my book, heightening your awareness of fear is one of the key aspects of overcoming fear. Simply because when you know how fear works, it just that simple awareness stops you from fearing it in the long term. A lot of it is just awareness. So once you realize how it affects you, you can then say, oh, I know what's happening here. 
and be able to move on past it. So when you realize you're about to say or thinking of or have said a what if statement, stop and acknowledge what you've just done that your question is based from a place of fear. That enough is enough to eliminate the fear because you're highlighting, you're bringing awareness, oh, I'm acting from a fearful state right now. But then this whole philosophy of the what if paradigm number two then leads me on to philosophy number three, upgrading your fears, choosing empowering fears. So having just discussed the what if paradigm, I should mention what if is not a negative thing. Yes, it is based in fear, but it doesn't need to be ne a negative situation that comes out of it. What is bad is what we habitually say after it without thinking. So now that you know what if is a precursor to a fearful statement, instead, when you hear yourself say a what if statement, you can pause, stop, and change the end of your sentence into an empowering fear. So if you were to say, what if I fumble my words on stage and look stupid now you can say what if i decide not to do this speech and not to go ahead with this speech and the person who really needs to hear this speech hear my words hear my message doesn't get impacted today and it doesn't change their life that is a more empowering fear now with that fear in place you would still be fearful but you would go ahead with the speech because you realize now how much worse it would be if you didn't go ahead with the speech now this is how this philosophy ties in to philosophy number one conditioned fear similarly you could say what if i don't do this speech i'm now because i'm deciding not to do this speech i'm adding to my reference experiences that i can't do this and it's making my fear of public speaking stronger and more powerful over me meaning the next time i'll try to do this i'll be even worse off it'll be even harder and i'll regret it even longer so another fear could be like what if i do this speech and i look silly and then the alternative could be what if I don't do this speech and I miss out on all the opportunities that this speech could have provided me in the long term for my career? For example, someone in the audience could have seen that speech, heard your words, heard how you spoke and wanted to offer you a different job or a different business contract or different things that will help your career and give you more money or turn you into the person that you want to become into. And this doesn't have to just be about public speaking, literally anything fear based, basically. And so it could be asking your boss to do something. So you may have a fear. What if I ask my boss to do something and um, they don't like it? Well, the alternative is what if I don't ask my boss to do something and I never get to know what his answer could have been. And it could have been he would have given me everything I asked for in that request. It could have been asking that girl out or asking that guy out. What if I uh, speak to this girl and she uh, rejects me in front of uh, a train full of people? However, what if I don't speak to this girl and she is the love of my life that I would never have known about if I just didn't take the action and speak to her? In this second the applications are literally endless it could be anything any situation in life family related relationship related business related anything related and the main thing with this philosophy is just to upgrade your fears into empowering fears your fears will always be there but you can choose which fears you decide to fear don't let the factory preset fear rule your life you can choose the fear you want to fear that will give you the best results in the long term so philosophy number four is external validation versus internal validation. Being that this video is all about fear of failure in particular, it's good that we actually discuss the word failure. So failure is feared because we fear what people will think about us. And if no one witnessed our failures, we would just keep failing until we succeeded. So external validation is when you take approval from others that your ideas are valid or worthwhile. Instead, what you wanna to learn to do or develop to do is rely on internal validation, which is not relying on the opinions of others, only relying on your own opinion of your thoughts on the matter. At the end of the day, others don't live your life for you. They don't pay your bills. They don't help you in the long run. It is all down to you. So start to rely on your own judgment and develop your own internal strength and validation. Someone who relies on external validation will sway in the wind of others' opinions. Someone who relies on internal validation is like a rock. They can't be moved. Simply adopting this philosophy will change your fear of failure immediately because it, you realize it doesn't matter what other people think. It's all down to you. And again, having that awareness of this is what is happening. This is why I fear failure. It's because other people's opinions of you matter more than your opinion of yourself. So if you weren't aware of it, now you are. Finally, philosophy number five is using death as motivation to act now. So I'm just gonna read a quick paragraph from the book that I wrote 
and um, it just encapsulate this whole statement using death as motivation to act now. Life is like a video game. You can't be better by just reading the manual. You have to get stuck in. You have to put in the hours. You have to play. The more you play and live and act, the faster the fear evaporates. You have to remember that fear is a mental roadblock and not a physical one. You have to remind yourself and constantly remind yourself that you are going to die. And this shouldn't be seen as a negative thing. It's just a fact, everyone is gonna die. So it's very helpful to remind yourself, it depends how much you need it, but if you need it a lot, then I would recommend even reminding yourself about your own death, your own mortality several times a day. You will die, you only live once. Once your time is up, it's done. Your youth and your time when opportunities can arise is fleeting and few. That's why you have to make the most of every single opportunity that comes your way. Because realistically, you may never get the chance to ever again, because death makes the same of all of us. So at the end of your life, if you're lucky enough to be lying on your deathbed and have time to reflect on your life, you'll more regret the things that you didn't do than the things you did do. So all of these fears of failure that if you're feeling nowadays will be the bitter taste of regret that you taste when you can't do anything about it. You see, you have no control over death. It is inevitable and it happens to all of us. But the only thing you do have control over is the actions you decide to take today. And I really like this philosophy of fear because it relates more to the third philosophy as well, which is upgrading your fears into empowering fears. Because when you really appreciate that you are gonna die, that your time is not infinite, that you have a ticking clock, the fear of regret becomes that much more powerful. So you can say that to absolutely anything. You can replace your fears with the fear of regret and that will change the game for you on pretty much every fear you could have. So let's say it's saying hello to that pretty girl in the gym. If you didn't do this and then you died <laughs> not knowing whether that could have been the love of your life, that is the worst feeling because you will never know. You will never be able to recreate that. You'll never know what could come out of it had you just gone for it and figured it out by yourself. Yes, you could have been rejected. Yes, you could have um, looked uh, silly in front of other people. But if you rely on internal validation, you don't care about that anyway. You're just still gonna go for it. You're still gonna put yourself out there because you know living with regret or going to sleep with regret at the end of the day is worse than experiencing that small, insignificant external validation failure where people are looking at you or you feel a hot flush or whatever it is like that. Regret will be the thing that pushes you to do the thing you wanna do. Whether it's speaking on stage, if you don't do this, your whole life trajectory could have changed. If you took that moment to go on stage, you met someone afterwards that enjoyed your speech and it just kind of snowballs from there. Whether it's doing experiences or different things that you wanna do in your life, when you get to your deathbed, you will regret the things you can't have done anymore. When you get to your deathbed, you will regret not doing them because you only have one life and you wanna fill it with as many things as possible. And when you look back and think, I should have done that, but I was fearful and now look at me, I'm still gonna die. What is there to really fear about if you're always going to die in the end? Just do it, do it while you're alive because you're only alive now. Anyway, I thought I'd just give that last little rant there because I am extremely passionate about fear. It's something that controlled me for a lot of my life and now I help people to overcome their fears through my book and through this video and through my YouTube channel and through my blog and stuff like that. So, and just through one-on-one -on -one counseling too. So it's something that I'm really passionate about and I, um, I've been there. I've been that fearful person and now I feel fearless because I've learned so much about fear in writing the process of this book and just in going through experiences myself in life that I feel will probably help quite a lot more people as well. So if you like this video, you'll probably like this book, How to Become Fearless. So I'll put a link down below where you can get that. And in that book, I expand on each point fully. I give examples for everything and there's stories that help you remember the philosophies way better. There's also lots of different techniques in the reframing fear section. And also just going over those three sections in depth will really break down what fear consists of for you. And what I aim to do with the book is to help you become fearless in a very, very relatable way. Because I'm sure most people who are watching this video are pretty much similar to me. Most of us haven't gone to war. We haven't had crazy life-ending circumstances that, that have come to us. But we have had a lot of practical, similar situations that pretty much everyone in the first world goes through nowadays. And this is where this kind of whole book has come out from, in the stories that I relay, in the writing itself, which hopefully you find funny and educational at the same time. And I think it's something that will help a lot of people once they get their hands on it. So again, I'll put that link below. Like this video if this helped you in any way. Subscribe to the channel. And if there's something in this video that 
really impacted you or helped in any way, then put it in the comments below because I'd love to read that and I love going over the comments and seeing how it impacted people. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.